Hi guys, Daryl at Indigro. Today we're here to look at our Vertical Daylight Harvester, which is a combination of two of our Vertical Daylight Harvesters on a cable reel system, winch system. And what the winch does, it's uh, obviously not at greenhouse height, but it's here now to where I can show you what its operation is. It would attach to anything structural on the top of your greenhouse and the cable system where there's two cables, that's a safety factor, should one break the other one will maintain the fixture or fixtures. And it's designed to work on 15 foot tall fruiting and flowering gardens. So if you have a uh, area that you're currently running horizontal trays, um, this it wouldn't be the application for this. But if you're doing you know, 15, 20 foot tall uh, verticals, then this would work nicely. And what it does is it takes the best of both EFDL, which is our induction lamp, and the LED systems. And very energy efficiently will uh, bring your crop DLI up no matter what the sunlight conditions are. It's there to offset uh, shortened sunlight conditions so you can meet crop DLI. It will generally mount at about 20 feet on the greenhouse and drop anywhere between uh, 12 and 15 feet and then hover up and down. And it can be set a number of different ways, but the control systems are designed to either let it travel like a normal horizontal light rail system would go or up and down based on sensors in the trellis that say where it's needed, uh, where light is needed the most. And uh, some of our inspiration comes from what we're seeing Philips do, for example, here in the Netherlands. They're taking uh, Luma LEDs and they're getting excellent fruiting production with, in this case, 1000 watt HPS dual ended uh, lamps on the ceiling. And then they add the Luma LEDs. And as the Luma LEDs get put in horizontally, they're static, they don't move. You can see the uh, fruit production is up substantially. So what we're going to do now is walk you around the hoist. And this is designed to mount to anything structural. It will swivel based on where your trellis aisles are. And as the trellis aisles don't always line up with the structure, you'd want that uh, capability to bury that. And at this point, there's enough sunlight coming in and the lights are off. But when the main sensor detects that there's not enough sunlight, it's going to turn these lights on. And right now, it's got very bright. Lights are on instantly, and they're at full bright. So our hoist is going to start traveling. And as it does so, it might drop 15 feet or so to the lowest point. And once it gets there, it'll slowly travel on its way back up to the highest point on the trellis. And this is all user definable and set it. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to stop it at its lowest travel right now and show you uh, with our electrical engineer, Jeff. The main sensor is designed to raise and lower the light output to meet crop DLI. So if you would, Jeff, using a flashlight, we'll get on that main sensor and you'll see the light output drop by up to 50%. And this is important because we're not wasting energy. What we're doing is we're only giving the crops the DLI that uh, you as the owner, the crop manager, has defined the DLI for that specific crop. During certain times of the year, you're obviously going to need more light. This may run at 100%. But as our trellis grows, and it might now be you know, 15 foot tall, you might find that the sunlight levels at the top of the trellis are greater than they are at the bottom. So with a series of pyranometers, cumulative sensors, we can tell this motor to either hover high, medium, or low on the trellis. And you can meet the crop DLI anywhere on the trellis. So as opposed to statically mounting these diodes, we're moving the diodes and the uh, primary fluorescent phosphor mix to the trellis. Much more energy efficient. So we really like the hybridization of this. It's uh, infinitely adjustable to your crop, your DLI, and your personal applications. So please visit our website. It's indigro.com. You can see our galleries, the uh, side-by-sides that include the phosphors and the diodes clearly indicate that the benefits of the 660 nanometer wavelengths are such that they can benefit the chlorophyll A absorption. We've seen some true fruiting, flowering site uh, benefits to that, anywhere between uh, 50 to 75 percent increase in flowering sites. And in the cases where sunlight levels come back up, 
the system will shut itself off. The 730 diodes come on to mimic a sunset spectrum. So if we've missed the natural sunset, the exclusion of all other wavelengths with the 730 diodes mimic sunset. So now you can take your plants into a more natural genetic photo period for their optimum crop development. And these 730s are running on lithium ion batteries. So the entire system is shut down. The lithium ion batteries emit a 730 wavelength and they'll time out in about five minutes. And as they do so, it enhances your phytochrome far red switch. Very important to uh, flower initiation. So instead of running a 12 on 12 off with the 730s, you can run a 14 on 10 off in flower. So again, check us out at indigrow.com. If you got any questions, give us a call, and we would be happy to help you. Thanks for tuning in.